Hey, welcome everyone. We've got uh, Jack Keller here. Uh, he's going to be uh, explaining to us how to construct the single flat wing fly. And he just told me basically that Kenny Abrams um, is has a has a fly on uh, fly fishing and saltwater magazine this month, and his flat wing pattern. Uh, is uh, kind of tailored behind Kenny Abrams' uh, fly. Anyway, Jack, welcome uh, to today's uh, fly tying session. This is kind of a neat uh, way of doing it. Uh, so you're going to tie the single flat wing uh, fly, and uh, I'm going to go through some of these different slides, and you tell me what uh, what we have. The first thing that you put here is that you wrap the shank with thread. Now, what kind of hook are you using? That's a Gaimakatsu SC-16. I think the SC-15 would work. I think it, a shorter shank hook is probably a better option, although I think we can tie it on a, on a 34007, or we can see if they have any of the Eagle Claw hooks that Bass Pro or whatever. Right. One of the things that I noticed here is that this is a pretty wide gap hook. Oh, yeah. It's a pretty wide gap hook. Yeah. And so this is much wider than the 34 7 This is uh, a number two guy. I think this is a number two or a number... Yeah, it's a number two guy Makatsu SC-60. Okay, so it looks like you started almost about a eighth of an inch, something like that, behind the eye of the hook, and you worked your way uh, back to, to al oh. almost to the beginning of the bend of the of the hook. Kind of equal with, even with the barb of the hook. That's exactly the way it looks, okay? So that's what we're going to do with that. And uh, now this next one, you're adding bucktail on top of the hook, and then you're making it flare. Now, what do you do to make it flare? You you wrap it with a couple of loose wraps first to get it attached. And then you pull down hard and make another wrap, and that'll start to flare it. And if you hold it with your index finger, you can pin it on top and it'll flare so from the top it looks like uh, a broom tail. So you've got it spread out horizontally mostly on the top of the hook. So if some of the hairs get down on the sides of it, that's perfectly all right, but most of them are up on top. Oh, okay. And then so you, you can wrap forward and secure it and then go back more or less to your starting point. That's that seems about right. Yeah, okay. Well, looking at the at the next slide, uh, yeah, this this is kind of interesting. You say to add a pillow, and, and what do you mean by that? Well, the pillow is going to provide a pace a place for the flat wing to rest, and instead of putting it directly on top of the hook, where it will tend to loosen up or come loose, it's much better to put the pillow there because that helps hold it in place. Uh -huh. so and what I do is I take a, a tuft of the lower end of the, even of the feather that I happen to be using as the flat wing, peeling off that little fluffy stuff at that, at that point, wrap it, I take some dubbing wax and, and pin it to the thread and then I make one or two wraps of the, that tuft of feathers to the top of the hook. I don't need to go under it, at all, although if you do it doesn't make a whole lot of difference, but you want the pellet to be on the top. Okay, that's, that's cool. All and right. you, since I say you can use the same, you can use the same feather that you're using as your flat wing, or you can use another one. It just depends on what you want to do. Okay. So in the next slide, what we're going to see is we're going to see you putting on this uh, saddle. saddle hackle. And was that uh, a tough from uh, from that saddle hackle? Actually, it was. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
So now you add the saddle hackle, but you say concave side down. What do you mean by that? Well, if you look at the feather, it's got a curve to it. It's and it's got a concave shape. If you look at so that the you want the spot. I guess the best way to think about it is we want the spine of the feather down on the feather on the pillow, uh -huh. so that the the concave side, in other words, the curved side of the feather is down. Okay, and and uh, I know one of the problems I have sometimes when I tie uh, a hackle, it'll swing to the side on me. Swing okay, to the side. So yeah. You, have to, you tie it down loosely, and then you sort of adjust it by pulling on one end or the other until you get it in the place where you want it. So it's flat. Yeah, and, and then you make your your wrap and hold it. A tighter wrap and hold it in place and make sure it's there. And this is the most difficult part I think about this fly is that if it rolls, then you have to pull it back again. You have to unwind your thread and get it up flat again and then tie it down one more time because you want it to fit that way. And once you get it in that position, it'll almost feel like it sort of snaps into position on the pillow and held only by the thread. Oh, cool. Uh-huh. And you don't put too many wraps there. No, you but... don't put very many wraps on it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Looking at the next one here, now you add uh, flash, uh, two to three strands. And what are we talking about there? What kind of flash are we talking I'm about? I'm using flash your boo but you could use flash your boo you could use crystal flash if you wanted to it's just purely up to you it's really your choice and this mm -hmm. happens to be the glow in the dark flash your boo because i had some extra pieces lying around <laughs> always trying to make it economical here <laughs> so you tie that on and you don't need but a once again a couple of wraps and your thread is Staying more or less in the same place that when you, as what, when you started. All right, that's that's cool. Okay, and not too many wraps. Not okay. Wraps. Then you take, you add the body braid, and you want to add the body braid to the underside of the hook and just behind the pillow. Uh huh. And. That way, that when it, if you do it that way, then when you wrap the body braid forward, it doesn't affect the pillow at all. Uh huh. Now, uh, just just as a question, uh, the body braid is it going in the same direction as what you've been uh, wrapping the thread, or is it opposite? Because I, you know, many many flies kind of. Follow different uh, do it patterns. either way. Yeah. What What would your preference be? I think it works better for me if I move it opposite the direction I've been winding with the thread. Yeah, I agree with you there. And anyway, what that's going to do is going to make it uh, a little little fat there. You know, it's going to give you a little bit of bulk, fat, but not very much. But not a whole lot. Yeah, that's cool. And okay. You want to, so what you'll do then is you'll Wrap the thread, you, you're you marking your tie-in point, which is supposed to be the distance between the barb and the point of the hook is the same as the distance between the eye of the hook and the tie-in point. Oh, okay. And oh. so you wrap the thread back up and over the pillow. Mm-hmm back to the tie-in point before you do anything with the braid. Really cool. All and right. You wrap the braid, first wrap over since you're going the opposite way, and you try not to get the, if you do it this way, you will not affect the pillow at all. So you don't want your first wrap to cover the pillow, you want it to end up in front of the pillow. 
All right. That thanks. That first rep goes up and over and then are under and back if you're wrapping it towards you. Mm -hmm. And then then you wrap it in overlapping or touching wraps all the way up to the tie in point and you tie it in. Really cool. All right. So uh, I've got uh, now the slide here where you wrap the thread forward and then you wrap the braid forward to tie in and tie it off. And that's over there, right? Yeah. Uh, at, the, at the end. At the end. And that's I'm, your tie-in point. Uh -huh. Flip the braid off and wrap back slightly so you've really got the braid on the well secured. Right. And then you take the next slide shows you take the marabou, and what you do is you take a tuft of marabou. It could be any color that you want, although I guess a lighter color would be better mm -hmm. because fish are counter shaded, so right. that's the best. You take the feather, and you go. You're looking for one that has a, almost a Y shape when you pluck the top of it out. So you're you're not keeping the the spine of the feather, you're plucking that out and you're having essentially a Y or a V-shaped piece of marabou left. Uh -huh. And then you attach that to the underside of the hook and the barbels on the marabou should more or less match lengthwise the bend of the hook bend on the where it comes or where it hooks around so it just barely behind the uh, end of the hook right and then you make a couple of wraps you can and probably go ahead and clip the marabou at that point it doesn't mm -hmm. it's a kind of messy at first but once you got it at that point it fits pretty well now you take a tuft of or another chunk of, mer of bucktail, and once again, it's your choice of color. I just happen to use chartreuse and, because I like it, but any color would do, but although once again, it probably ought to be a little darker than the bottom of the fly. And you don't need a whole lot of uh, bucktail. It's a relatively small amount. Mm -hmm. so certainly, you don't need a... I mean, lots of times they say as thick as a pencil. Yeah, this doesn't look... Like as thick as a pencil lid. Yeah, it's right. It doesn't look anywhere close to a pencil. A lot of, uh, of bucktail. Yeah. And you tie that down and you don't want it to flare very much. So you make a couple of loose wraps and tie, and gradually tighten up and then continue to wrap it tighter until you've got the until you've got it in the position that you want if it flares too much on you then you unwrap the thread and do it again until it gets approximately the amount of flare you want in it yeah at, at this point, it's it's get it's got a lot of a lot of bulk, not a whole lot of bulk, but enough bulk to probably move a little bit of water. Yeah, I think it will. Mm -hmm. It moves best in a current when and when you get it set up, it really does look alive. Uh huh. Then you go to the next slide and you put say seven to nine pieces of peacock curl on top of the bucktail. Uh -huh. Tighten it down and you're starting to form that bullet shaped head now. Yeah. And if you, the peacock curl can be, it should more or less go to the, have the same curve as the bucktail and probably the ends of it should be more or less even with the ends of the bucktail on the uh, that you put on first. Yeah. And you get that 
tied up and you get to the jungle cock, which is the traditional covering. Uh, let me tell you, I love that. Uh, you know, that's what I think makes this uh, this fly so uh, unique in having that jungle cock. I mean, you don't get to use it very often, but it sure does make a... This is the eye. Look, and yeah. It does, it does make a nice eye. It's the traditional way to do it. If you, had want, if you wanted to and you wanted to make a tougher fly, I guess you could tie the head off and just put a a spot of glue on the side there and add yeah. a uh, plastic Pr eye or something like Pr that. Prism uh, eye or something. Because uh, I don't think it would make much difference, but the jungle cock is the traditional. Yeah. And it will, if you're not, you want to make a couple of soft wraps as you pull it, as you put the jungle cock on, because if you tighten up too tight, it'll tend to to flare out and yeah. make an outrigger, and you don't want that no. <laughs> flat on the on both sides. So that's mm -hmm. all you have to do. Then you finish it up, put your quick finish it, put the cement on it, and it's ready to go. That's a pretty awesome fly, and, and it will undulate in the water. It's it really does look alive. It's just, there's just, I, when I used them out in the high school and Charlie Wall said, damn, that thing looks like it's alive. And it, it does. It really moves nicely. Yeah. Hey, Jack, when, when you're uh, casting, you're using it with a floating line? I use it with a floating line. Yeah. And it does better, I think, if there's a current because you drop it into the current and you don't really have to do very much stripping if you want it to just swing in the current and it'll wiggle back and forth and the trout seem to like it under those conditions they see it it looks like it's I guess sick in the water and they clue in on it if and it, as you strip it back it'll It'll push some water, like you said, and it'll wiggle some more. But you don't have to give it an awful lot of action if you just swing it in the current, and then once it gets to the end of your drift, then strip it back. Boy, I can hardly wait uh, to to tie this one. Uh, hey, I want to thank you, and I want to tell everybody that uh, you're going to be tying this uh, flat wing pattern on September the 3rd over at Bass Pro Shop at the meeting room. Uh, we're going to try to meet about 6.30 and hopefully we'll get a couple of versions of that uh, fly uh, for uh, anyone wanting to, to come. If you're a, a Rio Grande Valley uh, Fly Tires Club member, uh, it's free. And if uh, you're a non member, it's still a pretty good uh, deal. It's uh, two dollars and fifty cents for a lesson with Jack here and the materials included so uh, you know I hope everybody gets to go and Jack I want to thank you very much for for uh, spending the time kind of walking us through this fly okay Ray it's gonna be fun we'll have a good time with it right. and if we need to we can tie a more advanced version and put two or more flat wings on it so it'll look a little it'll be even more undulating in the water awesome okay what